Hey, how's it going, everybody? If you're new here, welcome in. And if you've been here before, welcome back. I'm Roll Chambeau, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And I'm excited to finally get a chance to talk ad nauseum about uh, my Spyderco Manix 2 build. This is a knife that I modified specifically for the competition that happened between Duty's Daggers, Knife Dope, and myself. And that competition was a ton of fun. We set out to see who could make the absolute coolest Spyderco Manix 2. And while this build did not come in first, it did come in second. And to me, it is still the perfect Spyderco Manix 2 specifically for me. The best part about modifying a knife is that you get to take something that is stock and make changes, make changes that make sense to you. And how all of those changes come together is your special twist on that knife. And I've got to say, the base format for this build is amazing because you get the excellent cutting geometry of a Spyderco Manix 2, and you get to pair it with the ball bearing lock from Spyderco, which has proven to be the strongest weight bearing lock that Spyderco makes even more so than their ever popular lockback design. I'm also excited to talk about what went into this build. So if you're interested in any of these modifications or any of these aftermarket parts, feel free to check the description down below because I will leave links to them and no, those will not be affiliate links, but if you're interested, you'll know where to find it. Starting off with the hardware. The hardware is a very important part of any build that I think a lot of people truly miss out on because it's so important. When you take a knife apart, it's easy to strip the stock screws. And it's easy to do that because sometimes there's Loctite involved. Sometimes the steel on those screws is soft. For the hardware, I went with rock scale satin titanium screws, and those are great. I have never had any issue with any rock scale titanium screws stripping, despite the numerous amount of times I have taken knives apart, including this knife, and all the opportunity that comes with it to strip those screws. So the titanium screws are a must, at least in my opinion. They really do help make sure that your knife can stand the test of time. Next is the pocket clip. The pocket clip is a titanium alien frag milled pocket clip from Met and Boss. And I really, really like this pocket clip. The one thing I do not like about it, however, is something that I can't change. And that is the milling for those screws. You might notice that those screws do not look like the other screws. And that is because they are stock Spyderco Manix T6 pocket clip screws. The way the pocket clip was designed was to be used with the stock screws on the stock scales. Unfortunately, that means that the T8 titanium screws that I had lined up for the pocket clip did not fit and would not work, which is a shame because I would have liked to have continued the T8 theme all the way around, but on the pocket clip itself, we had to make an exception. I did try two other pocket clips on this build. I tried the MXG deep carry titanium clip. The issue I had with this one is that it wasn't aesthetically pleasing for my purposes. Because of the place in which these screws are placed, the MXG clip stands proud way over the end of that handle scale. And that just wasn't something that was acceptable to me in this build. The other clip that I tried to use was the rock scale design Tanto clip. It's also a titanium 3 mil clip, but it's very skinny. And I decided ultimately that it looked better on my Spyderco Para 3. And so I ended up putting it on there. And so this was actually the third clip that I tried specifically for this build. And I think that overall it came out well. Not only is it a frag pattern milled clip with topographical anno, but it also matches the scales. And the scales are really the highlight of this build. I love these. I'm a huge fan of frag pattern milling that's done well. And Met and Boss does some of the best frag pattern milling that money can buy on aftermarket spider coat parts. Furthermore, this has the blue alien anno job done to it which adds a lot of depth it's a kind of a blue topo anno over these gray titanium scales and it looks fantastic it really pops and with that 3d frag milling it adds a lot of depth to this build now with all the milling that's been done there's a large opportunity for this knife to actually be uncomfortable but every edge is nicely knocked down and, and nicely finished and so the ergos on here are arguably better than they were when it was just in its stock format i really enjoy this the g10 stock scales are a little bit rougher and with these milled out titanium scales it feels more fit and finished and it feels more premium it does feel a bit 
bit heavier. And that is kind of the trade off with going with titanium scales is you do gain a bit of weight, but that doesn't scare me away. A couple extra ounces never hurt anybody's pocket and it surely doesn't hurt mine. Another piece that I added to this build was the lanyard plug. I'm not a huge fan of having holes in my scales, especially when they're beautiful scales like this that have extra milling being done an extra anno that's been done because I don't want to interrupt that design. So it was important for me when choosing a lanyard plug to find one that actually fit the motif that was going on on the scales as closely as possible because Mettenboss does not in fact make an alien anno lanyard plug and I ended up going with the blue titanium topo lanyard plug because it fit the closest and I also think that it looks good. It improves the look of the scales by making them more solid with less interruption because of the loss of that lanyard hole. The one mod that I did not do that I think I might do after the fact is change out the ball cage. That's this piece right there. And that's important because during the load bearing tests that have been performed on the Manix 2 ball bearing lock, what they found was is that under extreme pressure, the weak point ended up being that plastic ball cage, which means that essentially if that were to be upgraded to a titanium ball cage, it would actually improve the strength and integrity of that knife lock, which is already pretty insane to begin with. I'm not sure if I should go for a plain titanium finish, kind of like we see here on the hardware, or if I should go for a blue finish, but definitely let me know in the comments section down below, which you think would look better. We already know that being titanium material will improve its strength overall. And so that's something that I'm really looking forward to doing in the future. And then lastly, you'll notice that there is a mirror finish on the edge of this blade because this is a knife that I've used and I've carried a bunch and it's not one that I bought specifically for this competition. It has some wear and tear. The DLC coated finish has held up really well over time, regardless of whether I've been cutting rope or cardboard or plastic or cloth. This has gone through all the tasks and it's always come out on top. I really enjoy this mirror polish finish. It's one that I put on there myself. And in fact, this was the first knife that I ever put a true mirror polish on an edge. And not only does it look good, it also makes it extremely slicey at the same time. So how much did all of this cost? Well, if we exclude the cost of the blade, which initially cost me somewhere in the realm of 160 to 180 bucks over three years ago, we have the scales, which come in at $140. We have the lanyard plug, which comes in at $30. We have the pocket clip, which comes in at $60. And then we have the titanium hardware, which comes in at another $30. So that means that well over $300 was spent on the extra parts and pieces that make this build come together. Is it worth it? The answer is, is that only you can truly decide because whenever you modify a knife, you might think, well, I put all this money into it. If I go to resell it, I should get a good amount for it. But the truth is the secondhand market is not kind to modified knives. So if you are going to take the time to modify it, the most important part is, is that it's perfect for you because chances are you will never get out of it what you put into it. But that doesn't matter because if it's a tool that you truly love, you won't be looking to get rid of it anyways. Don't modify a knife in hopes of being able to turn around and sell it later. Modify a knife so that it really reflects your vision for what the perfect version of that knife can be. And that's not something that I can stress too strongly. The recent competition between myself, Knife Dope, and Duty's Daggers has really done wonders for bringing this knife back to life for me and really showing me how much I do love and appreciate this knife. After putting the extra pieces together, this is not only a great knife, it is a great knife specifically for me. But now I'm curious to see what your guys' thoughts are. What do you think of the Alien Boss Manix 2 that you see before you? Let's have that conversation in the comment section down below. And if you want to watch more awesome knife and EDC content, make sure to click on one of the videos that pops up next. Thank you.